Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Alsis, addiction master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about a movie called Blade. Blade came out in 1998. In 1997, about the same year, they were doing the preambles for the X-Men movie. But the mistake Blade made was not putting a Marvel logo onto the beginning or end of the movie. I think there was a Abby Arad story that he was furious. But one of the real staples of the super, you know, superhuman community, not really a big comic book seller. There's, you know, there's history behind it in a way, but looking at it from a movie point of view, it blew me away. I was so excited and I've always been this give me a comic book movie. Uh, I remember Superman, uh, even sneaking into Superman 2, the Batman movies. Big comic book fan. If you have any association with my channel, I even role play superheroes and online. There's a love for the character now that really wasn't there. It at least did that. Blade was something. I've come across here and there during my comic book runs where I would pick up and, you know, you, you put things on a list and you go get your comics every week. Once in a while, he'd be in a tie-in. It was I was interested here and there. But not until this movie came out. And man, what a, what a ride it was. It's directed by Stephen Norrington, written by David S. Goyer, and stars Wesley Snipes, Chris Christopherson, Stefan Dorf. It's got great chemistry between the characters. I was actually impressed with the fighting in the martial arts. There's an issue with the second movie. There's one scene where the CGI just bothers me. And in this movie, it's at the end when they do the final battle. Doesn't ruin the movie. But it's a little tiny nitpick looking back on it like, oh, this was the cusp of special effects really working. There's a charm to this movie, Wesley Snipes' presence. He brings it 100%. There's this um, likability of this character who's cutthroat and in a weird predicament. It's got a... Pretty solid story. It paces really well. It's got some great fighting. And the plot revolves around a character, Wesley Snipes, who's a daywalker, if you want to call it that, a, um, a product of a human and a vampire. So you find out, and I think it's somewhere in the movie, spoilers, it's fucking 1998. But there's a attack where this woman is attacked by a vampire. She goes to the hospital in the flashbacks, and it's Blade's mom, and she's pregnant. They're able to save the baby, but she dies. And he gets the strengths of a vampire, but none of the weaknesses, except for you find out, which is you know some of the subplot is his need for blood or his. Um, like he needs to produce a serum, and that's what they try to. He doesn't want to have to drain people of blood or you know animals, I guess. And there's this story that kind of mixes, which is probably pretty interesting to me. Where there's a um, Blade just starts off like in a rave and just going to kill a, a vampire establishment, and you find out another subtlety to the plot of. Um, the families of vampires and such. There's a um, huge, awesome fight, and the music is just kick-ass. The whole soundtrack seems to be spot-on. And the cops bring one of the vampires to like the hospital, and one of the, I think it's a philobotomist, uh, some kind of nurse doctor, and she gets bit, and as Blade's just like ready to kill everybody. He saves her, brings her back to his place, and his um friend uh, Abraham Whisker Whistler 
is his uh you know mentor sort of who's taught him everything growing up and that's how the movie kind of starts so she has a little bit of knowledge and tries to work with blade controlling his bloodlust for lack of a better word and it's just such a good fun movie i was so surprised going back and watching it how spot on he is in the character and whoever takes it over has got a big job ahead of them i'm sure it could be done you know uh and just his he had a there's a difference between you know what he did in the blade movie and what has come afterwards because it's like the beginning of really top-notch superhero movies i do love the sam raimi spider-man one and two but three eh. and there's the x-men which are really good um but this movie still shines in that era i mean you got the matrix coming out several other movies that are really uh johnny darko or just the trend was being said and this one stood out for me for being a superhero guy and like i said there's no real um memory of me really excited about blade in the past before the show I, like when i watch the netflix shows i've done some the videos on those a podcast and i'll say like oh yeah you know what uh power man and iron fist i used to really like that comic so watching those shows was really just a joy as bad as some of the writing was here and there i can't say that with blade like i don't have that urge and excitement but it was a comic book movie it looked kick ass i mean just everything about it was you know you got to go watch it at that time underworld has gotten a little bit of fame and got that feel and look it's a vampire versus werewolf type movie I'll say all Blade movies were okay. The first one's great. Love the second one. The third one's okay. And as a trilogy, it kind of rounds out a little bit of a downer. But I don't look at it like that. I just have fun with all three of them. But this one is just just shines. And even now, when you look at it, perfect run time. You know, just about two hours. Pacing's amazing. The ups and downs. The hero's not... um perfect he's got flaws and as much as he tries to joke and make these quips here and there he's gonna take care of his job and he's not gonna fucking take shit for it how you manipulate your environment and you find like he's taking the um jewelry and stuff off the victims he's got and he's like gotta make money he's gotta sell it just interesting stuff in the underground in the second movie. You gotta give Blade a, a shot. This movie's really fun. Just a fun ride all, all around. Now, have the other movies captured its essence, its movie, uh, you know, the uh, familiarity of it? No. The second one tried a lot. Is this a little too much going on? But I liked it. When you get to the chemistry with the characters, him and Chris Christopherson really just work together. You watch it on the screen and you're like, okay, I can feel this relationship. You can get it. Maybe that's just the uh, good actors, uh, good at what they do. But sometimes I think you look at it and you can see some movies and go, you know what? Oh, uh, good actors, but this didn't work. This works. Uh, everything from the cinematography to camera work, the music. You're just having fun from beginning to end. Just enough gore. And then, okay, the end battle. And maybe a little bit of a nitpick about how silly it seems to put um, Sunblocker on. Like, you know, like you're going to the beach all over your face and risk going out as a vampire. Now, helmets, oh, I'm okay with special helmets, like the motorcycle helmets. I could see that, but you're going to risk going out caked up with sunblocker. I mean, 
it's just, just a little out there. And then we have the grotesque monstrosity CGI fight at the end where Blade's got to take on the um, last villain and he uses some of the newly acquired uh, serum stuff he's got from the woman he saved that fucking makes your blood explode and it becomes this globular mess. I really enjoy it even to this day, but I could see where it's like, you know, it's it's not as uh you know fine as you want it to be and even when I look back at like the thing from John Carpenter, it's just spectacular. Okay, this is a little bit short. Maybe if you look into the history of it, there's a story behind the end of the movie, like what they wanted to go with, what they were able to do. I still love it. It doesn't give me any uh, negative feelings towards the movie. It's just, I laugh a little bit here and there, but it's just fun. Um, and like I said, there's a reality to the character. If you can feel him, the relationship, what he's going through, it permeates his performance, Wesley Snipes. It's good to see characters who are flawed like this. And since you don't get the full origin like you do today, these days, for the most part, you know, Doctor Strange, Captain America, to get their full movies. This was at a time where it was like, really, what was happening? They were planning to do the X-Men. You had the shambles of the uh, Batman movies, which I still fucking enjoy. I don't give a shit. Blade, 1988. Holy shit. Just fun, excellent movie. You got horror action. It's it's Marvel Comics, which is like, I, I heard, I, I can't verify this, but there was a story that Avi Arad wanted people fired because there was no Marvel logo at the beginning and the end of the movie. And maybe that has changed because obviously we know what is now at the beginning and the end of every fucking Marvel movie. It's a huge logo extravaganza now. And at the end, it's usually there with a cutscene or, a, you know, most of the time. Now, can this compare to, like, one of the best superhero movies ever, I would say, is Infinity War? No, but it still holds up with the films I love, like Thor Ragnarok, even the first Thor movie, uh, Captain America. Winter Soldier, a little more isolated and small feeling. But when you look at the landscape of what was going on behind the scenes with the, uh, you know, you got your um, vampire hierarchies in the Blade movie that's revealed in here, and uh, Deacon Frost, who's Stephen Dorff's uh, character, is playing that game, uh, you know, politics in a sense. And he's unruly and uh, looked down upon, and he changes things. And his whole um, familiars, how they brand the people. It's got so much layers that work, and not in a, oh, over-the-top bullshit way, like some of these movies. I mean, I can't tell you how angry I get at the Predator movie, uh, the remake from Shane Black. And I know this is not the same thing, but I know there's a Blade movie coming out. Or is it a show? There was a show. It was okay. But, you know what it is? Um, you know what? I'll have to look into it. There's going to be a Blade something. And I think one of the guys from... Uh, what was it? Uh, the Luke Cage show. I think one of the villains from the Luke Cage show is going to be Blade. Maybe... Uh, this is the age of the internet. Um, see, I could do something real quick. I don't see nothing here. Future. Um, Wesley Snipes would do it, but you know, he's getting old now. This is 2014. Uh, they're resetting them all. Ah. Mashrahala Ali. Ma. 
Mahershala, Mahershala Ali starring his boy. Okay, so it is going to be a reboot in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That could be really fun and interesting. And you might say there's a better chance with it. I like this guy. I'm holding the mouse over the fucking uh, name. Mahashala Ali. Uh, American actor, former rapper. Was it similar to Accolades, including uh, Bath Awards? Yeah, I liked him in... Uh, I think he played Cottonmouth, but... You know, I can hit the fucking thing, right? It's fucking podcasting. I'm flying at the seat of our pants. Because Joe doesn't want to write super outlines for silly turn the mic on stuff. But... Uh... Is it official and stuff like that? That's interesting. It is... Uh, Blade is to be announced pre-production. Okay. So, this is uh, interesting. I like this actor. And let's make sure. Yes, he was Luke Cage. He played Cornell, Cottonmouth, Stokes. Really good in it. Good actor. So, I'll, I'm in for that. But, wrapping this up for the Blade first movie. It's a, such a specific time. Again, this is comparable to me talking about a lot of my childhood movies and what they meant to me at that time you know in 1998 um you know near 30 um born in 71 so i can imagine what this was like for kids growing up what a what a time i mean blade great pretty good x-men movies came out just uh, sam Raimi spider-man was out coming out but this set the trend this was a really Great movie. It had everything you needed in an action movie, tying it into Marvel superheroes, but in a really fun way that had no, uh, you know, there wasn't bells and whistles and big streaks across the sky with superheroes. The Avengers movie, the first one, Josh Whedon, was fucking amazing. I still love it. And but even but the success of that Marvel made even their solo origin movies big and feeling uh, a little bloated right here and there with uh, guest stars and stuff. This is a pretty decent horror movie, action movie. Wesley Snipes, 1988, Blade. Watch it if you haven't seen it. Just a fun ride. And like I said, he has a charm and a presence that captivated people. And they did three movies with him. I liked them all. I think the second one was strong. The third one was weaker. But fun value is there. I'll watch the fucking Expendables again. What do I give a fuck, right? Anyway, Blade. Go see it. Watch it. Download it. Do whatever you gotta do. Be safe, people. Be healthy. I'll talk to everybody next time. Take care.